Hello, and welcome to the LifeWorks podcast, where we share lessons learned from the trenches of life and business to help you achieve more, live more, and be more. I am your host, Mark Botros. In this episode, I want to talk about why we need to give our best to those we love. Specifically, I want to talk about how to make the transition from work to home in a really elegant way. My wife has a mantra that she has instituted in our home, and our kids can recite it verbatim. She says, the people we love the most are the people we are the kindest to. I love this statement because it always reminds me where I need to prioritize my time, and even more importantly, my energy, and my attention. Here's the problem. We typically give the best of our time, our energy, and our talent to everyone else, our customers, business partners, friends, colleagues, and just about anyone who isn't our family. Yet, when we get home after nine or 10 hours, leaving it all out on the field, or rather at the office, or even in the home office, What do we give to our loved ones and those closest to us? We give them our leftovers, our realness, our annoyance, our exhaustion, and our anger. Certainly not our best, or at minimum, we're tempted to treat them this way. And believe you me, I get it. After nine or 10 hours going all ahead full at work or in the business, sometimes you're just done. However, this brings up a couple of honest questions. The first question is, what message are we really sending to our loved ones? If you work outside or even inside the home, there is already a tension between business and personal life. Your family doesn't see you enough and they feel it. The problem is worsened when our attitude coming through the door or walking out of our home office is one of tiredness emotional and physical sensitivity, and annoyance. Our family wants and needs the best of our time and energy, but we just spent nine or 10 hours giving all of that to someone else in pursuit of what? Making money? When we're not able to switch on in a positive way for the sake of our loved ones when we come home from work, what it communicates to them is that they matter less than someone else someone else who is not their family, someone else who is not their husband or wife or their father or mother. The message that it sends is that they, the very family you helped build, are secondary to you. The second question this brings up is, what example are we setting for them? We teach others how we want to be treated. The example and tone that we set sets it for the rest of our family. The model we are giving them is that we give our best to our jobs, businesses, colleagues, customers, partners, managers, and our employees, and we give everyone at home the leftovers, what's left over of our time and energy. That's the example that we're setting. That's exactly what we do at the end of the day when we've treated everyone else better than our family. None of us ever intends to treat those closest to us like second-class citizens, but it's very easy for our family to see where our priorities are by the way we treat other people relative to them. If we treat everyone else with a smile, politeness, and human dignity, shouldn't we do at least the same for those that we helped give birth to, to those that we married and share a bed with? When we are at home, we need to be consciously aware that we don't treat our loved ones with anger, annoyance, and frustration. When we do, it sends a clear message and a clearer example that that is the way we treat family. Guess how our children will treat their spouses and their children when they get home from work? Exactly the way that we treat them. We are their model. After all, who else do they look at if not us? The truth is we need to treat everyone well, the way we want to be treated. And that applies especially to our family and loved ones. At the end of the day, our jobs and businesses will change and evolve. Our income will come from different sources as we progress in life, but we only get one family and we need 
to treat them like our number one customer. Let me offer a solution. Oftentimes, all we need to help us make the transition between work and home is something simple. Personally, I often work at such an intense level that I know I need it. So I do some of the following to help in that transition, and I offer it to you as a solution to consider as well. Reflect on the things that you're grateful for from the day. Listen to an audiobook. Let your mind wander. Sing a little bit to yourself. Say some simple prayers. Close your eyes and meditate for a few minutes just before you click in and engage. That said, before I'm ready to engage my family, the final thing I do is I have my own little mantra that I usually say to myself, and you can modify this to suit your own needs if you choose to use it. So this is what I say. I'm about to walk through this door. This is the best part of my day. I don't know what I may be walking into. The house might be a disaster and everyone may be in a terrible mood, but I am here now. And despite all of that, I'm going to bless my family with my time, love, and attention. I may not do this perfectly, but I'm going to do my best. If nothing else, my family will know that I am glad to see them. Here we go. Remember, the people we love the most are the people we are the kindest to. I have a question for you. How do you make the transition from the work or business part of your day to the home part of your day? What ideas do you have for making that transition smooth? If you enjoy this podcast, please subscribe, leave a rating, or comment. The biggest compliment you could give, though, is to share this with someone else. Thank you so much for the privilege of your time and for watching or listening to the LifeWorks Podcast. At Peter Mark, we are making a leap forward in consulting through thought leadership, actionable, common-sense strategies, and real, down-to-earth solutions that positively impact your business and the world.